So today we are in Shoreditch. We're actually going to be mitching around a bit. And I've been trying to vlog since we got back from um, uh, New York, but it's just been a fail every time. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to include those clips now. So you guys are going to relive some random moments in January with me now. What is this music, Alan? Do you like it? Yeah, it's like addictive to dance to. Right. Yeah. Okay, so my outfit for today. I've got black unicorn t-shirt on, acne cardi, and other story skirt, which is still available online. I've worn this outfit so many times, especially last, like, end of summer, autumn time. I would just wear this, but without tights, and then with, like, white trainers, or, like, a white t-shirt or something. Um, so it's a really, really, just, like, good, diverse outfit that I can wear throughout different seasons, which was what I'm loving lately. Like, in the summer, I can just wear the skirt with like just the t-shirt and that works really well too um, and then I've got my Doc Martin church boots on these have been such a staple for me this winter um, and then as always my Majuri earrings so hopefully you guys can see my outfit better it's just so dark this time of year in London like it's forever grey and cloudy and my living room just is really bright in the summer but in the winter clearly not so hopefully you guys can see that okay now that I've brightened up my camera a bit <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm in Victoria, it's post work on a Wednesday and I don't know if you guys saw my pre-Christmas vlog, it's kind of loud around here, but I basically got free tickets to go and see Curious Incident on, of the Dog in the Nighttime from the Society of London Theatre. It was such a nice thing for them to gift us before Christmas and today they've actually done the same, so it's like now like a New Year thing. Which is amazing, I'm a huge theatre fan so I'm very excited. Um, but Alan, I'm just meeting up with Alan post work now in Victoria. I'm just going to cross this road, road whilst I can. Um, because we're going to see Wicked, which is one of my favourite musicals. I think I've seen it three times, I listen to the soundtrack all the time. But Alan's never seen it and I've been telling him for years that we need to go and see it. So I'm really excited that we get to go today. First stop though, Shake Shack. Got to have Shake Shack for dinner and then head over to the, I think it's called the Adelphi Theatre. So this might be a bit shaky guys because I haven't got my stick with me that helps me with walking with my vlog. But there is Victoria Station. It's very big, very old. Nothing that special on the inside but the outside is quite cool. If you're interested in London architecture. And then straight opposite is the Apollo which has Wicked. That Wicked's been here for years. Um, I think I first came to see Wicked when I was like 15 um, here, which is pretty cool. And I first saw Wicked actually in Manhattan with the original cast, so like Adina Menzel. It was incredible and definitely just something I've loved for many years. I'm very excited right now. Oh, the set looks so cool. I'll try to show you guys properly when we get in, but I'm not going to be able to film too much, but I'm so excited for it. I feel like my excitement, like all I'm going to tell you is I'm excited for this one of my favourite musicals I've ever seen. So Alan and I are going to spend our Sunday afternoon going through all of his wardrobe, like everything. We've already done coats and shoes, we're now doing knitwear, we're going to do trousers, we're also going to do all of his summer clothes, which is why he's in kind of like a spring-like outfit, because we're trying everything on. This is a really great thing to do if you want to just make sure that everything you have in your wardrobe is something that you're going to wear and that it's still your style and that you still love it. And if not, you can donate it, you can sell it on eBay, Depop. There's so many different options. So we are nearly at the end of the month now. Um, I've got the most random clips of vlogging for you guys. I don't know how I'm gonna put this video together. But anyway, I'm going out for dinner tonight with my friend. I'm heading to St. Paul's. Um, I've got the day off work today, it's Monday, uh, because I worked on Saturday, so I get today off. Um, and so my friend works at St. Paul's. I'm gonna go and see her. I'm gonna leave in about, oh, I should have left like four minutes ago. So I'll leave off drive so I can show you guys quickly. But I'm, I always, with London Transport, you never know if it's going to run smoothly or not, so I always leave with loads of time. So even though I should have left five minutes ago, I'm still going to be on time, which is good. Um, but this morning I trimmed my fringe, which I wanted to talk to you guys about because in a video I got recently, um, I got a comment from Met Louise Nielsen, and it says, Hi Eva, love your channel, thank you, that's really nice. Um, she says, I wrote you on Instagram, but I'm not sure if you've seen my message, which is strange because I checked my Instagram and I didn't see your message. Um, but so it's good that you left me a comment on YouTube as well. Um, and Met would love to know 
um, or would love to have a video with an update on my hair situation. Do you still cut it yourself every time or do you sometimes go to a hairdresser and then just maintain it yourself every now and then? If not, would you consider a visit to a hairdresser to see how it would look if a professional worked on your style? Um, so I think if I saw a hairdresser, um, I'm sure they could do a better job at it than me. That's their profession, they're trained. It's just that right now, I don't want to be spending my money on haircuts. It's very expensive in London to get a haircut. It's like 50 pounds. Um, and the place I was going when I first got my bob done, um, it was really expensive. It was like 90 something pounds. Um, and I just, my hair grows so fast. So last summer I started cutting my bob myself um, just to trim it. I have to do that like every five or six weeks. And it will grow a lot so at the moment it's short because i cut it like two weeks ago two or three weeks ago but in another three weeks it will be like here like it grows so quickly um so it's just financially not maintainable for me to go to the hairdresser that regularly i think if i decided to grow my bob out then i would just get trims every now and again whilst it grew by a professional um but because i am loving it being such a cropped bob i just i can't afford to go that regularly to the hairdresser so being able to do it myself is so helpful and you know it's something that i thought i would try and if it looks terrible i would go to a hairdresser but i feel like i like it like i think it it looks good of course i think a hairdresser will probably be able to do something better um but for the time being like i don't know i don't see myself stopping cutting it for the moment just because it's really convenient i can do it at home it takes me 20 minutes now if that um and it's really easy to trim with my fringe same thing i'm pretty sure it would look better if a hairdresser did it pretty sure it's even a little bit wonky but i only cut it this morning so i'm just gonna let it be and then um over the next few days i can kind of see how it sits each day when i'm waking up and if i need to adjust it i can um so yeah, it's kind of glary. Can you guys see better? Anywho, that is my update on my hair. So I hope you enjoyed that. Also, how do you pronounce your name? Is it Met or Metty? Met? Let me know. But I love getting comments from you guys with questions. So keep them coming. And as we go through videos over the next year, I'll be sure to answer them. And yeah, that's how we're going to do it from now on, I think. Because I'm really enjoying talking to you guys like this. Okay, I've made it to St Paul's. It's so busy here because everyone is leaving work. It's just such a beautiful building. It's up close. It is massive. I'm right by the steps. And look how big it is. They've lit up so well. I feel like it never used to be this bright. Okay, now that you've seen what we've been up to on and off and how bad I've been at vlogging, back to today. Like I said, we're in Shoreditch. I'm definitely scoping out people to take pictures of just to enhance my portfolio keep sharing street style photography that's something I really want to do more of this year um, so far I've seen two people who I really want to take pictures of but getting started when you haven't done it in a while is difficult and I'm trying to build up courage so I've said next person I see I'm just gonna do it and yeah I'm definitely gonna do more vlogs this year talking about like street I think we're waiting to cross the road are we going that way yeah, let's go that way when we can cross. Well, till then I'll just like finish vlogging for you guys here. Um, yeah, I want to do more vlogs this year, talking about street style photography, how I decide who to approach, how I approach people, and things like that. But for today, I guess if I can build up some courage and get pictures today, then I'll share those with you as the day goes on. And then later on today, we might go to the Barbican. We shall see. We're kind of just going to see what happens. Wing it, mooch around, see what happens. Um, Shoreditch is a really cool area with a very cool vibe, so definitely somewhere worth coming to check out. I've vlogged in Shoreditch many times before, so I'll put a couple previous Shoreditch vlogs below. The chips are coming. Oh, nice. I'll just go get the chips, yeah? Yeah. So we are currently in Box Park in Shoreditch. We've just um, had lunch, or we're having lunch at What the Pitta which they do like vegan donna kebabs, they do falafel wraps and I have to say guys, it is really good got some nice french fries with it too and a baklava because we got meal deal Alan got the vegan um, donna kebab and I got the falafel wrap it's massive, I'm probably going to eat half of this now, the other half later but it is really really good there's so many food selection places and um, in Box Park like loads of little booths everywhere so definitely recommend checking it out 
No, I'm full. <laughs> we're just gonna eat everything in Brick Lane. Um, so we're on Brick Lane, Bacon Street, Dark Sugars. This place is known for chocolate and the hot chocolate. We've never tried it, so we're gonna head in and see what it's all about. Oh wow, you can smell it even just at the front door. Look at this. All of this like truffle chocolate. Mm. Whoa. Whoa, look. So she so it's salted caramel hot chocolate and then frothed milk and she put like loads of grated chocolate on top. Mm, let me have one. <laughs> Alan mm. can't resist. Okay, mm. should I try it? Yeah. Do you just sip it? Mm -hmm. It's got salted caramel sauce on it. Nice. Wow. So it's almost like marshmallowy. Is it sweet? Or is it is it more rich or more sweet? Creamy? How is it? This is the front view of what we see when walking down Redchester Street. We're back here now. It's probably one of my favourite streets in Shoreditch. There's a lot going on here, some really cool shops. You've got like I mean, I, I used to love J. Crew, not really my vibe anymore, but there's J. Crew, there's the Labo Aesop, they've got shops like Modern Society, which is kind of like a concept store. It's got a cafe inside and some clothes. Here's the Labo. We just popped in this shop called Ada on Shoreditch High Street because I'm on the hunt for Alan's um, shoes. With your Excelsior sneakers? Yeah. Alan, can you stop so I can just show them your shoes? Like, how cool are these? Um, but they're so hard to find in women's sizes, whereas by that shop Ada stocks women's Excelsior. Um, I'm probably not going to pick them up till the spring anyway, but they didn't really have any sizes available to try on. So I guess I'll just have to try them on when they come back in stock. But I think they're really cool and they'll be a really good replacement in the spring for my common projects because my common projects are pretty old now. Anyway, now we're going to head down Rivington Street to go to Artworks, which is a magazine shop down here. Um, fantastic magazine shop. They also have an artworks in Hackney and yeah, really great place to kind of look at books, magazines. I'll show you guys inside a bit. It's quite small in there, but I'll see if I can vlog. This is somewhere that I have vlogged about before because whenever we're in Shoreditch, we usually pop in. So if you do come down this way, they have a Banksy here, which they've protected with plastic which is quite cool, so if you want to see that. I mean, Shoreditch is known for its street art. It's pretty much street art on every corner. And last time when I was talking about how much I love graffiti and street art, there was lots of people in the comments saying how they were very anti-street art. So let me know what you think below. I think this is a very artistic area and it's represented on the streets. Um, and I'm personally a fan of like street art. So it's really interesting to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Are you pro or against street art? And here is Artworks. You can see it's pretty small in there. So, I don't know. I won't be able to vlog much, but let's have a look. Yeah, let's go in. You would love this drink. We just got it when we had lunch and now. Really into it. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Normally, I only drink water, so this is quite a treat. Yeah. <laughs> Since we were in um, Shoreditch, we've walked over to the Barbican. There's an exhibition Barbican. I really want to see. Somewhere down there. Yeah. Doesn't it look so clean since yeah. I cleaned the lens? Well done. Yeah, so it's like a 20 minute walk from Shoreditch to Barbican. Definitely recommend doing it because it's nice. Like, the city's always empty on weekends anyway and very old school buildings like apartments and offices there's all sorts you can walk down little like off roads and really just get a feel for london especially this area of london the city is um i think quite offers something quite different to if you're in like the west end or central london and i would always recommend coming here if you're visiting I, i'm a huge fan of the city i love it i used to work here for a few years um well, like a year ago and i kind of miss it but it's nice being back but yeah, so there's an exhibition on at the Barbican about like couples, it's £16 entry, so we're going to think about whether we're going to do that. It's, I think it's too expensive. Yeah, That's £32 pounds between two people. Yeah. We'll see. We can always come back. But anyway, there should be other things on. Um, the Bar Barbican's just like a very cool um, building. It's very Space. ugly. Um, 
difference from what you think is ugly, I guess. But I don't know, when is it? Is it like 70s built or earlier? I'm not sure. Interesting. We shall see. Anyway, we're going to go there now. So this is kind of the advert when you walk in for the couple, modern passionate couples. Um, but it's the modern couples are intimacy and the avant-garde. Well, it's not until the 27th of January. Oh, that's not that. Oh, wait. That's literally in like a couple days. Hmm, let's see if I can persuade Alan to go in with me. <laughs> so the little outside area when you come into the Barbican is really, really nice. I can imagine the summers must be really busy. Um, and these... Um, flats here which are kind of connected to the Barbican but obviously they're separate they're flats but the building is all similar I absolutely love these I think they're probably not everyone's cup of tea because of how much concrete there are but just the way there's so many flowers hanging off them I just love that mix of growth and like nature with brick concrete in the middle of the city it's a really cool contrast so our little journey to the Barbican is short-lived managed to convince Alan to go to the exhibition, went upstairs to floor three to go to the art gallery and found out it's sold out until tonight. They are open till 10 p.m. but we just, we've got so much to do at home tonight so sadly that's not gonna happen. But we did get a little like brochure of what's happening here in February so that we can plan ahead and then make some plans to come and see an exhibition, see what's on next month and book ahead because it's definitely Definitely something we want to do more of, just go to more art galleries, really make the most of them in London. Uh, most art galleries in London are actually free, so if you went to like the V&A or you went to the Tate, if you went to even like the Natural History Museum, Science Museum, they're all free entry and you can see a lot inside of them. Um, but if there's specific exhibitions on, you normally have to pay for them. Barbican's a bit different because it's like a centre, so they have cinemas here, theatres, um, like they have different shows on in, in like a theatre area, and then the third floor is an art gallery that is usually paid for um, exhibitions. So it's something to bear in mind. Um, but yeah, London has so much to do, and we're trying to make the most of it. Ready, cap. There we go. So we found some things out about the barbecue. We're going to be leaving soon, but we've just been sitting outside even though it's cold. Um, it's such a nice surrounding, so very nice to sit and chat. We've been having some nice little chats, me and Alan. Um, but we found out some things about the Barbican. So the style of architecture that's Barbican and like in Barbican, the borough. Or the borough or the area? It's not a borough. It's an area. Yeah, the borough is. Are we still in like... I think it's in Islington. Islington, yeah. yeah. So in the area of Barbican, a lot of the architecture is similar to Barbican Centre. And like the flats and the building that oh. I showed you that is Barbican. Yeah. So like all of these buildings around are um, described as um, brutalist architecture because it's just a lot of concrete and like I was saying earlier the way they've got the greenery on the flats I actually think that's something that they put in place to make it less brutal because a lot of people don't like the style of this architecture um, but it's something to just take in and kind of get your own opinion on it definitely is very brutal but it's like I think it's very typical 80s see it was built in that time yeah. and yeah it's just really interesting if you have like an interest in history and architecture it's a very interesting place yeah. so i would say this is a good place to come and i've never vlogged here before yep. so it's something new finally new. for my youtube channel yep. yeah so we're now going to head home i'm going to wrap this up here i hope you guys enjoyed seeing bits and pieces of what we did today and bits and pieces of what we've done throughout january february there will be more vlogs we're going to San Francisco next week and we're going to LA but those vlogs won't be coming for a few weeks just because we're going away for two weeks so there'll be some time to catch up afterwards. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one, lots more to come as always. I hope you're having a lovely day or evening wherever you are and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys.